amidst the cruelty that Jesus was facing of nails being driven into his hands and feet and being hoisted on the cross along with two criminals, Jesus utters prayer to his father. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Now, as we take a few minutes to meditate on the seven words that Jesus spoke on the cross, we'll focus on the first word uh, right now in this broadcast. Now, let us not see the cross as something done for us, a statement that uh, the theologian John Stott had said, but let us look at the cross as something done by us. Now, this is a remarkable statement that Jesus made. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This is remarkably unselfish prayer on the lips of Jesus amidst ex excruciating pain that he was facing. Now, this prayer embodies the height of unselfishness. Jesus' prayer flows out of a deep love for those whose souls, which were in much greater peril than his own physical pain and spiritual isolation. In asking the Father to forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, Jesus is obviously praying for a multifold number of people. First of all, he would be praying for the Roman soldiers who routinely and brutally put an end to people's lives. Jesus was also praying for Pilate, whose indecision and self-serving political move to hold on to power led Pilate to wash his hands and deliver Jesus to be crucified. Now, Jesus was also praying for chief priests and scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees who had orchestrated this killing out of jealousy. Now, but most importantly, Jesus was praying for you and me. You know, through our deliberate disobedience to him and abuse of his dying love in hurting Jesus through our actions, through our decisions, through our lifestyle, and perhaps sometimes through our inaction. You know, you may ask, how am I persecuting Jesus as I live in 21st century? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Let me just give you one example of how we would be persecuting Jesus in an encounter that uh, Saul of Tarsus had and what Jesus' response was. In the book of Acts, we read of a man called Saul of Tarsus. He was persecuting Christians. And while on his way to Damascus to imprison Christians and torture them, Saul experienced an encounter with the risen Jesus. And of course, when he faced Jesus, he did not know at that time it was Jesus. And when he was struck with blindness and fell to the ground, he said, Lord, who are you? And Jesus' said, reply was, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. You know, in this statement, it is clear that Saul of Tarsus was crucifying Jesus, persecuting Jesus, even though he was actually persecuting Christians. So what was being done to Christ's followers? It was hurting Jesus himself. So in his statement, it is very clear that through his actions, Saul was persecuting Jesus. Therefore, Jesus includes you and me in his prayer as he prays to the Father because of the dishonor that we have brought to Jesus through our deliberate disobedience to his word. And we persecute him through our actions and behavior and sinful lifestyle. You and I made the cross necessary. We are also the ones Jesus is praying for to the Father. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. You know, in praying to the Father, Jesus sets an example for us that we should pray addressing God as our Father, as Jesus taught his disciples. We know in the Lord's Prayer. Now, you might want to spend some time meditating on the Lord's Prayer during this season and reflect on what Jesus was teaching us to include in our prayer as we pray to the Father and recalibrate our lives in the light of Jesus' teaching and the example that he has set before us. Now, even as we start those opening words of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
No, we would be arrested as we address God as our Father who is in heaven. And as we hallow his name, we reflect on the times that we have not hallowed his name. And as we ask Jesus or God to forgive us of our trespasses, even as we forgive those that trespass against us. And as we are praying that prayer, probably God brings to our mind some of the people who have offended us and we have not forgiven them, but expect God to forgive us. You know, the example that Jesus has for us in the garden of Gethsemane, that dark night before he was led to be crucified is a powerful image of what we should be doing when we face challenges and temptations and pain. Now may we run to our heavenly father, both to seek his forgiveness and to ask grace to forgive those who have harmed us and cry to him when we face painful and difficult and challenging situations. You know, it is possible as you reflect on this verse, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. You probably think of some people who have hurt you and harmed you and forgiving them might be very difficult. Just reflect on this prayer. May we emulate Jesus to lean on our heavenly Father for strength and for grace. May God help us to appreciate the incredible sacrifice that Jesus has made. And even in this prayer, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. It just speaks to us of the unfailing love that Jesus has for you and me that he is willing to forgive. No matter how far we are gone away from him, he's calling you home because he has prayed to the Father to forgive you and to forgive me. May God enable each of us to have that experience of enjoying his forgiveness and living in the liberty that he has bought for you and me on the cross. Thank <laughs> you.